On behalf of the state of North Carolina, it's a pleasure to offer warm greetings to everyone attending the grand opening and ribbon cutting ceremony of the new Yancey County Public Library. The new Yancey County Public Library is part of a rich tradition dating back to the 1930s when the Marble Handicraft School served citizens through its circulating library. Since that time, residents have come to count on the outstanding services provided by Yancey County's Public Library. Uh, today is a, is a very proud day. Today we rededicate this building to a new life of public service. My remarks are about the steering committee members, a unique group of volunteers for this project. We were the first to come to see beyond the broken windows, the crumbling bricks, those bats and pigeons you heard about, leaking roofs, deplorable plumbing, and so on. And in seeing beyond all of this, we saw what you today will see and what we and generations still to come will use and enjoy for throughout their lifetime. It's not every library that has such two wonderful patrons and individuals living here in Yancey County. And I think what is on your plaques describes best our feelings. It says, presented to Everett and Ruth Kivett. <laughs> You came to Yancey County as visitors and stayed a lifetime, sharing with us your genuine appreciation for our mountain arts and crafts and our mountain way of life. You leave us with a gallery which will give to generations a true sense of their identity as native artists and craftsmen who dwell within these Yancey County hills, coves, and mountains. In return, we know you as our friends, our neighbors, and we shall be forever grateful that you came to call Yancey County home. Thank you. Well, we, we actually started our consideration of relocating the Yancey Public Library to this site in 1999. So we began to look at this building and were very fortunate to have the Board of Education interested in seeing that someone would take the building and do something very productive with it. So that began the process of their deeding to the county, the property, with the request that it be considered for use as a Yancey County Public Library. We were interested in making sure that the building would also be on the National Register of Historic Places. The motto was, and still is, preserving the past, preparing for the future. And as I explained to the archives and history people from Raleigh, that preserving the outside of the building was a key factor because it more or less would tell you where we have been as a county with our educational pursuits for our citizens. But once you would walk through those doors, it would be today and the future. Former Congressman Charles Taylor was instrumental in securing for us the Save America's Treasures, a federal grant for exactly that, preserving, it was to preserve the outside of the building. We raised all total a, a, a million and a half dollars. Of course, by the time we completed, it was three million. So we were very fortunate, though, to have a very strong government in our project participating uh, through those years. So they were very supportive. But truly, this was, this was a volunteer project coordinated with the county more than any other group that participated. To point out the wonderful support we had from our community as well as many businesses and foundations. And here, of course, is the Yancey Foundation listed in our $1,000 plus donors. They were very generous in giving us $12,000 to begin the architect's design process for us to, to really be looking at the detailed specifics and we could narrow down the total cost. So that was critical to get us moving in the right direction. With One of the things that we've tried to do since the very beginning of this re library renovation is to incorporate all the newest technologies and ways that are going to make a difference to the communities here in Yancey County. One of those ways is the teleconferencing systems that we've put into this community room, which you see here. 
but also into the small uh, room, the small conference room a little bit down the hall. We are making this available. We'll make this available for small business people, for government leaders, for nonprofit organizations that need to be connected with their home office or with uh, continuing education workshops and the like, wherever that might be, nationally or internationally. But the philosophy behind this is that the library needs to be able to serve the information needs of the community. And the information needs of the community include things like helping people to find jobs. All of our librarians, for example, have gone through the training to use JobLink. They're able to help people to develop their resumes. They're able to help people use on the online resources that provide them with opportunities to see what jobs are available and then to be able to apply for them. That's another part of what we're doing here is providing people with the state-of-the-art computer systems that they are able to use freely. What we've done is to make sure that we have wireless capability throughout the building. Our library is the first library in Western North Carolina to deploy uh, thin client technologies. These are more reliable, they're faster, and they're more maintenance friendly than any of the other uh, workstation components that we've been using in the, the uh, SECU Information Gateway, a full, full presentation system because we intend to begin digital literacy classes and help people who are not affiliated with any educational institution with the opportunity to learn how to use computers and how digital literacy can make a difference in their careers and in their jobs.